And I know that I'm gonna burp. No, it's gone! Now I'm gonna get bloated. Oh, where was I? Um. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel for today's video I'm going to be doing another coffee talk with you guys I do not have a coffee in my hands because I am being so strict be very good and very gracious because I'm doing this like eight week challenge where I'm trying to get super duper fit and trying to just be very good at taking care of my body and the amount of caffeine that I consume sometimes on a daily basis is not necessarily healthy so let's jump to the actual topic of today shall we for today's video I wanted to cover one of the topics that has been requested before and it's also also one that is again like most of the times that I film these videos it is relative to my life right now at this moment and that is loving yourself it's a it's a serious topic because I find a lot of us struggle in silence when it comes to actually genuinely loving ourselves and accepting ourselves for who we are and I find that especially lately in our generation it is so common for us to have such deep lying insecurity because of social media and because of the constant comparing that we're always doing and the constant images and things that are flooded and kind of forced down our throats to be like you need to have bigger lips bigger hips smaller waist you need to have beautiful hair you need to look like this you need to live this life you need to be super happy all the time you need to have the perfect boyfriend the perfect this and it kind of leads you to all of a sudden waking up and being like I don't want to be me and you're suddenly trying to be everything you're not and with that constant struggle to try, push yourself to be what you're not, you end up losing yourself or you end up not loving yourself anymore and you kind of forget everything that made you, you. Like when I think back to being a kid, I never worried about any of that stuff. I just woke up, did weird shit and went back to bed. Like I remember pretending to be Harriet the Spy and like spying on like raccoons and things like that or sorry raccoons i say words weird okay it's it's just become a common theme everyone calls me out for the way that i say things in my videos i like to say raccoons okay i think it's funnier than raccoon and like do the weirdest things like you know you would pretend like the floor was lava and you jump from couch to couch you were never worrying or scrolling and and obsessing over the way our body looked or your face looked and and so I feel like this is such an important topic to talk about and it's also an important topic for me because I recently went through a phase where I was feeling so incredibly insecure about myself and insecure about not only the way I looked but who I was as a person things that would normally make me super happy I just felt numb to every time I'd go on my phone every time I do anything it just almost kind of added to the heaviness of how much I was starting to feel like I didn't love myself and I didn't like who I was. It's such a personal thing and and I feel like it's something that we all feel at some point in our lives. So we kind of already talked about this, but the first thing that I feel is one of the easiest ways to suck all the joy out of your soul is to compare yourself to anybody else on this planet. And it's a really hard thing to do to just be like, oh, I'm just gonna stop comparing myself altogether because I mean, it's just, kind of human nature. We look at what someone else is doing, we're like, damn, that's really cool. Then we all of a sudden look at what we're doing and we're like, well, that doesn't look like what they're doing and what they're doing looks a lot cooler than what I'm doing. Now I suck. It just becomes this like spiral where all of a sudden you're looking at someone else's life via most of the time social media, which is a highlight reel. We tend to compare our sitting on the couch, you know, late afternoon, no makeup on, watching Dr. Phil with someone's photo of them traveling the world with their hot boyfriend getting amazing high quality HD photos, eating pineapple and having the most perfect tan. So the trick is how do you stop comparing and I feel like you're gonna catch yourself comparing for the rest of your life. It's just, it happens, you know? There's never gonna be a day where you hit it and you just stop comparing yourself to other people. But for me, the way that I kind of stop myself dead in my tracks is when I notice myself observing so what somebody else is doing or what someone else looks like or something really cool about someone's personality or, or something like that. Instead of instantly being like, how do I measure up to that? I appreciate it and I drop it. I let it go. I, I think that that is something that is really cool that that person may have worked really hard for or it might just be something that is very true to them and makes them an individual and I remind myself that there's probably things that I have that make me an individual. When you measure yourself up to who you were yesterday then it's so much easier to be better. It's so much easier to be a little bit nicer each day or work a tiny bit harder each day or give yourself a little bit more you time each day or get a little bit more sleep 
eat a little bit more healthy. Things like that makes it so much easier to stop comparing yourselves to other people and kind of put your blinders on and compare yourself to yourself. Does that make sense? The second thing that I feel is really important when it comes to loving ourselves is to take the pressure off. Like, when you really think about it, we put so much pressure on ourselves to meet these certain standards and there's nobody forcing us to feel that way. There's nobody forcing these standards upon us. I mean, yes, as a society, there's typical standards that need to be met for you to be a model or for you to do this or that. But we ourselves get to have that final decision whether we accept those pressures or those conditions or those metrics of what we see as successful or beautiful or whatever it is. We put that pressure on ourselves. It boils down to our final decision. There are definite ideals kind of forced upon us through social media and through, I mean, the t all the things we're consuming on a daily basis, but when it comes down to it, we make the final decision whether we accept those metrics or whether we create our own. And so I am terrible at this. I am so bad. I put so much pressure on myself that if I don't meet certain standards, then I can fall into like a really weird, like almost depressive state because I beat myself up so hard for it. And it kind of runs in my family. My family all, we all kind of put a lot of pressure on ourselves. It almost kind of takes an outside source of someone that really cares about you to be like, you need to stop putting all this pressure on yourself for you to take a step back and see it. And so if no one's around doing that for you, then take this as a person that cares about you saying, are you maybe putting a little bit too much pressure on yourself? We try and create these ideals for what we think is gonna be happy or beautiful or successful or well-liked or loved by other people and then we suddenly feel this overwhelming pressure or we put this overwhelming pressure on ourselves to finally meet those metrics and those standards. And you can control that. You can shift your perspective and try and see things from another light. Like Maybe you don't have to have a huge group of friends to be considered well-liked. Maybe you don't have to have a whole lot of money in the bank to be happy. Like You can shift your perspective and shift the type of pressure you put on yourself. And when you do that, when you take some of that pressure off or you allow yourself to create like a new standard for yourself, being happy is so much easier because we tend to, like our brains tend to trick ourselves into believing that like happiness is something you attain, like you have to get there, but you can be happy throughout the whole journey of life, really. I know that that's so cliche, but it's true. Like I might not feel like I'm at my best health wise or like fitness wise, but I can still be happy while I'm progressing towards my own goals. Like I might not be there yet, but I want to enjoy the whole process of getting there instead of just telling myself that I'm only going to enjoy it once I'm there. The trick of that is that once you actually get that goal, suddenly that goal is not good enough and there's something bigger or better or more that you want. When you take that pressure off, you allow yourself to kind of enjoy the process instead of just keeping this goal on this standard that you have to get to before you're allowed to be happy. Just take a breather, take the pressure off. Instead of focusing on what we lack, it's sometimes good to kind of check in every now and then and focus on what we already have or things that we've already, you know, attained or the work that we've already put in and the results we're already seeing. Like if I constantly feel like this is the standard I have to get to, I'm not paying attention to the fact that I'm already so much closer to that than I was last year and I'm not enjoying that, you know? I have to be grateful for where I'm at right at this moment and I have to be grateful for the things that I, I have already or the things that I've created for myself already or else I'm never gonna be happy. An easy way to do this is to keep a gratitude journal and you just keep a little book, you can keep it beside your bed, you can keep it in your purse, wherever it is. Every time you can, catch yourself in a bad mood or every time you catch yourself in a good mood, pretty much any time at all, write down a few things that you're just grateful for. Or when you catch yourself comparing yourself to somebody, stop yourself and type into your phone, like keep a list in your notes of things that you're grateful for and type into your phone five things that you like about yourself, five things that you're grateful for, five things that you love about your life. And keeping that gratitude is what's going to be like the key to happiness and the key to loving yourself. Because when you tend to make a habit out of finding things that you're grateful for and make a habit out of finding things that you love about yourself, then loving yourself is just gonna naturally come a lot easier. Another thing that's like helped probably the most in the most recent amount of time when it comes to like confidence and, and self-love is taking care of yourself. And this is something that I find when you 
when you fall into that pitfall of low self-esteem and insecurity our subconscious starts to trick us into thinking that we don't deserve to take care of ourselves like why not eat like junk because I already feel fat anyways why even bother putting together a nice outfit because I know I'm not gonna look good in it and I know that that sounds terrible but these are the types of thoughts that we play through our head and it stems from where we're feeling it stems from that insecurity and that self-hate that we get that all of a sudden we stop taking care of ourselves we start eating like crap we stop working out we stop letting ourselves relax we stop telling ourselves good things or giving ourselves things that we know are gonna make us happy that day and we just kind of let go of ourselves in a way we stop letting ourselves enjoy the hobbies we love we stop being the person that we are we almost even stop enjoying the things around us like I told you like I was going through a phase where things that would normally make me so happy I was just numb to because I almost tricked myself into believing I didn't deserve the happiness that stemmed from it or why even bother feeling happy about it if I was eventually just gonna feel like crap anyway like it sucks when you fall into that because it's such a dark hole but it's true and when you start to take care of yourself even when you don't feel like it and that is the biggest part because when I started to take care of myself again there was not one bone in my body that wanted to do it. I looked for every reason to procrastinate and every excuse not to. But once I actually started to, you know, meal prep again and start working out again and start doing little things that made me happy, even though for the first little bit I still felt a little numb to it, it eventually thawed that numbness. And with taking care of myself, I started to create a different standard, thinking like, no, what? No, I am going to go for a run today because I deserve to feel that good feeling at the end or my body deserves that exercise because I know that it's healthy for me. The trick to that is to not stem it from like a superficial reason, like don't take care of yourself so that again you can meet that pressure or that standard. Take care of yourself because you deserve it. Take care of yourself because you want to make your body happy and you want to make your mind happy and you want to keep yourself happy. And so when it comes down to it, taking care of ourselves is one of the most important things and even when you don't feel like it, if you force yourself through that first like thick sludge of resist and you do the things that you know are going to make you feel better in the long run, eventually it becomes a habit and it also kind of creates this space in your life of you time. Like working out is me time. Meal prepping is me time. Or when I refuse to kind of associate with someone that's being super negative or or things like that, just doing these types of little tiny things that boil down to caring about myself and taking care of myself, it, it creates this domino effect of self-love. And it sounds so corny, but it is so, 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 so true. So dress yourself up, take yourself out, take care of your body, join a yoga class, do the things you gotta do to take care of yourself, get more sleep, hang around people that make you feel good, Give yourself some time to relax every day or to meditate every day. Like do what you gotta do to take care of your body and take care of yourself because that is going to be one of the biggest things that I find personally will shift that self-hate into self-love. And then my last and final tip, and this has been my motto for the past like two weeks and I think it's just gonna be one of my biggest life mottos, stay light. And that sounds so simple, but I wanted to make it simple so that it's easy to remember literally just stay light when you think about it there's light and there's dark and our thoughts can be light and dark everything in life it's like yin and yang positive and negative light and dark sun and moon whatever it is it's all it's all you know intertwined in this weird thing we call life but staying light means you know keeping your face towards the light and I know again that that is cliche but let me explain my perspective on it I was recently driving to my boyfriend's actually and it takes me about 30 minutes to get there with traffic so I have a lot of time to think and within that time I went from feeling so crappy to so happy by the time I got there I was having such a bad day I felt so insecure I felt so crappy about myself and I was feeling just so heavy and weighed down and as I was driving like I said it was simple things like listening to the radio with the windows down that went from making me feel so happy to me being so numb to it and so I was kind of playing through that little thought process in my head and then I realized that you know what I there's nothing different about this situation aside from my perspective on it and I am letting myself feel heavy and I hope I'm not coming across insensitive because as someone that does struggle with mental health I don't want to be that person that just says just get over it but in all reality I actually had to trick my brain into just generally getting over it and not not even getting over it but letting go of it anytime I start to take life too seriously I 
that's when I kind of start to get into those mindsets. And so I decided to take life lightly, to not take everything so seriously and look at everything going on right in front of me at that second lightheartedly instead of so heavily. And I'm not kidding you, in the span of a few seconds, I felt 100% different. All of a sudden was turning up the radio, I was rolling down the windows and I was just like, it. Like laugh at the fact that I was having a bad day or laugh at the fact that I was feeling insecure because my hair looked like crap that day or like things like that. I literally just started to like laugh at myself and stop taking everything so seriously and it kind of created this epiphany that when you keep light, like when you stay light, when you look at everything light, just do everything with a light heart it creates so much space to breathe and it takes all that weight off your shoulder. Even the things that I generally still don't necessarily like about myself or I'm working at learning to love about myself, when I look at them with a light heart, I can laugh at it instead of just beating myself up for feeling that way. When you stay lighthearted and you stop taking life so seriously, it becomes like, it's honestly like, oh, I can't describe the feeling. It was a sudden huge weight off my shoulders. The heaviness, the thickness, like the dark just suddenly just blossomed. So corny, but it was so true. I'm not kidding you. It took seconds for me to see everything so differently. And all of a sudden, the things that I love to do and the things that bring me so much joy, like driving around in my Jeep with the windows down and the music blaring was making me beam from ear to ear when just seconds before I was looking at it so numb and so whatever, such as life, I hate this, I hate everything. Like honestly, that was like from one to the other, that was how quickly I shifted. You have to stay lighthearted about all this. Like guys, when you really think about it, why the heck are we even here? Honestly, we get so consumed with all the things that go on in our daily lives that we forget that life is kind of a joke. It really could be, like we don't know. We don't know if this is all just one big joke and God's playing Sims up there and he's laughing at us, you know? So when you take life a little less seriously and you take yourself a little less seriously, it makes it so much easier to love your life and to love yourself and to laugh at yourself and to enjoy everything around you because it instantly takes the pressure off. Like, it will all seem so easy. It'll all seem so free. And so hopefully some of these tips helped you guys. And if there's anything you guys wanna to add to this discussion, as always, leave it down below. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this coffee talk. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye guys. Days pass slowly, lost and low. You gave me hope.